I wonder what the fan base is feeling about Steve Kerr. And we'd love to take your phone calls up till the top of the hour, 888-957-9570. Where are you at, not only with this Warrior team, but Steve Kerr in general? Because I, I see a lot of people on social media, and I know it's the lunatic fringe, and I know not to look at social media and take that as the opinion of the general populace, but I've seen more, J.D., of criticism of Steve Kerr harsh criticism of Steve Kerr than I've seen in any previous year. And I understand some of the points and we can get through some of the finer points of, you know, should you have fouled Chet Holmgren at the end of the OKC game? And I'll ask you that here momentarily. And, you know, his rotations, you know, should Corey Joseph be playing ahead of Moses Moody? What the hell's going on with that? I'm seeing a little bit more, uh, harsh questioning of Steve Kerr, a guy who's won four straight titles, not four straight, but four titles with the Warriors, and he's won nine of the last 27 overall. I just wonder where this comes from, and I, I wonder where Warrior fans are. 888 where are you at with Steve Kerr, and are the Warriors back all the way back? Yeah, I, I don't know that they're all the way back. I need to see more on that note, which which we've been able to dive into. As far as Steve Kerr goes, I, I think that criticism has been there uh, at this level. Last year, for sure, I, I think going back to the year before they won the title, I, I think it was there. I mean, there, there's just always, and, and like you said, it is that fringe that that is just aggrieved about everything from the lack of development, from... The, the young players, I think there's this, you know, people have built, you know, Jonathan Kaminga, for example, I think irrationally built him into this budding superstar to where when he doesn't play like that on a night-in, night-out basis, people think that there's something wrong because of that, that he's not just a young player that's developing at the level by which a lot of young players develop, especially within the the context of, of what the Warriors are, are, are trying to accomplish with a veteran-laden team and, and working him into the mix. There's there is a lot of I think misevaluating positions like you know the Moses Moody for for Corey Joseph thing is one that comes up a lot. It's like well it's it Corey Joseph is the third point guard so if you don't have your number one point guard right. then your third point guard is going to become your two point guard and so Moses Moody is a is a two three or even a two three four in some smaller lineups for the Warriors he has nothing to do with whether. Corey Joseph is going to play or not. So you, you see a lot of that kind of stuff that that I think is easy to just throw away. Uh, now, I, I think some things that are fair, you know, not taking a timeout when you're the game's starting to get away from you against OKC. Right, right. I think they, they would have fouled if there had been a little more time left than 1.6. And, you know, I always go back in that particular instance to, to my early days in the business and covering teams and covering the, the Sacramento Kings and Rick Adelman was the head coach. And I've, I've said this on Warriors wrap up. Rick Adelman would always say, you really have to trust all five players that you put on the floor in that situation. If you're going to foul that they're going to execute it properly without putting somebody on the line, shooting right, a three. Right. And so it's and a that's lot. What Steve will tell you when it, we talked to him today. It's a o'clock. lot easier said than done. You basically can't have one weak link uh, among your your group out there. And look, there are times where I think it's obvious that he, Adelman back in the day never fouled in that situation. I feel like the Warriors, for the most part, haven't as opposed to have, but I don't think it's been totally absolute. But I thought with 1.6, it's really hard because it's almost a direct catch and shoot. Right. So to me, it's really hard if you if you say we're going to foul. If it's a direct catch and shoot, you're you're how are you going to foul him without, unless you're, defending him in such a way to where you see the ball coming toward the player you're defending and you just kind of obliviously run into yeah, him run before him. he exactly. can get the ball. And that's obviously, fun. but you also with 1.6 have to make sure you do it after the ball's been inbounded. Right. You know, the you ball has to be out of the guy before the ball's been Otherwise inbounded. you're going to get a free throw and they're going to get to take it out again in that situation. So I thought the 1.6 made it a lot less cut and dry than, than many would have you believe. Yeah, and I think that is the point that Steve will make when he joins us today at 5 o'clock. I do think that there's more of an open criticism to what happened in that third quarter. I'm looking at the play-by-play -play right now, 
And uh, Gilgis Alexander scores to cut it from 16 to 14 with five and a half to go. And the Warriors use a timeout there. So it becomes 81-67. And then from there, Oklahoma City would go on a, a bit of a run. They would close out the quarter on a 19-6 to burst, make it a two-point game at the end of the quarter. So he did use a timeout at the beginning of that, of what would become the slide. And I guess maybe you needed to use two. Maybe you needed to use two. And I guess that's where the question comes in because he uses a timeout with five and a half to go to give him a, br- a breather. Kaminga comes in for Clay. Moody comes in for Wiggins. And then you get a turnover by Kaminga, a turnover by Steph Curry, a turnover by Kaminga. Curry misses a three. That was the crushers, the, the the turnovers. Yeah, it was boom, boom, boom. And Holmgren, you know, scores at the rim. Gildas Alexander makes a dunk. Now it's a 10-point game. Moody scores, but Holmgren dunks again. And it got Oklahoma City in rhythm uh, as well. Yeah. Like, it got them to a point where they were almost unstoppable for the Warriors defensively for the rest of that game because well, they, they woke gained, up Gildas they Alexander. Some, exactly. He they gained was the one who life. got in rhythm. And then it was just... You couldn't stop the freaking guy at that point. Well, he, he hits a three to cut it to seven. Sharich misses, and then he hits a two-pointer, cuts it to seven. Kaminga with a dunk. Gildas Alexander again. Pujemski hits a jumper, and then Isaiah Joe. No answer for Isaiah Joe. Hits a three to make it a four-point game. It's what, his tenth three of two, <laughs> the two games? And, uh, you know, that thing did get away from him. They had plenty of chances, though, at the end of the ball game, including, I mean, Wiggins hits a big three, and then Holmgren hits the three to force overtime, and ultimately you lose in the extra session. 888-957-9570, your phone calls straight ahead. Are the Warriors back, and how are you feeling about Steve Kerr? Here's Steve Kerr last night, J.D., in the post game. He was asked if the win was a bit of a relief. A little bit of both. We weren't perfect, obviously, but you know, at this stage, you just need to win a game, and that's um, you know, that was the focus tonight. That's why I played Steph the whole fourth. He was brilliant, I thought, all night, and then I thought Wiggs was um, fantastic guarding Van Vliet. That's a tough assignment, but just got to grind it out, and and um, you know, so hopefully this is a, a good sign, and we can uh, get get back on track. He was answering the question of was it a relief or progress or both, and yeah, it's a relief when you end a six-game lo- losing skid and you actually win a game on a homestand, J.D., that had been winless up to that point, but maybe it's not as much progress as I'd like it to be because I, I do think that what I saw from that game, it feels to me like they're back to where they need to be. I, I don't think that there's anything they could have done last night where I would have said they're back. Like, winning was the was – the obvious, right. as I said, so you're more admission. you're more of the of the side of relief as opposed to progress. Yeah, I think I think it's relief that it. All right, you're back to one under as opposed to being three under because we've talked about the math on you know once you get multiple games under five hundred, how long? I mean, it might take you two weeks just to get back to even, and at that point, who knows what the hell your team looks like as right. far as who's healthy and who's not and where you are in the Western Conference. I mean, if it takes you three weeks to get back to five hundred. All of a sudden, we're pushing. The Christmas holiday, and you're tenth in the West, which is you know plenty of time to change things around. But as we've seen, uh, the Warriors are going to have to, I think, this year more than some other years, remain relatively healthy to go on a, a significant run. So to me, la- last night was just about get the win any way you can. It was nice that that Clay Thompson shot the ball well from three point range and had his first twenty point game, and and it was you know Curry shooting the three well, Chris Paul shooting the three well. That Chris Paul was really just a steadying oh, yeah. influence throughout the the whole game. Like I, I think we're seeing more often than we're not how good of a fit Chris Paul is for the Warriors and and this team. But you just you just need everything. We're, it goes back to the thing that I always say about two different kinds of depth, right? You've got the depth where you have everybody and you love your depth and you can pick and choose who's going to play and you can go through different roles. I think the Warriors have that kind of depth. I don't think they have the kind of depth where you can withstand, uh, you know, a Steph Curry being out or a a Draymond Green, even in Gary Payton being out defensively. It's really, I think, wrecked them for for the most part in the games where they've both Yes, and that's two big pieces in terms of your depth. And so now you're going to rely on more players to step up and play well 
in a spot where if you had Draymond and you had, you know, GP2, that right there is 50 minutes of your 240 that you could rely on to, you know, players who are a little bit more bankable than some of the guys you you are looking to utilize. You you mentioned Clay Thompson and man, good to see Clay start to lock in and and feel a little bit more comfortable shooting the ball and he was asked about how it feels. How does it feel, Clay, when you see the ball go through the hoop? Uh, it feels great, and hopefully uh, breaks the seal for many floodgates to open. And uh, yeah, it always feels good to shoot the ball well. It does not feel good to not shoot the ball well. So I was very happy uh, that I made some shots tonight, even though I feel like I could have made more. But uh, at least they were great looks. Yeah, hot early, 7 of 16 for the game, 5 of 11 from 3, 20-point game, his first of the year. Are you feeling like, J.D., if Clay Thompson starts to see the ball go through the hoop a little bit more often, that he can get back to maybe not peak Clay, but get back to effective Clay? Yeah, I, I think to me it's, you know there's some much better games coming than the games that he's had of late. I, I don't think there's there's any doubt about it. For me, it's more about, the bad games and li- I, the thing that to me he needs to work on is keeping like the it's really just recognizing and finding the balance between trying to get hot on nights where you aren't hot and also keeping the ball moving and and allowing it to come back to you for better shots and look there's going to be a lot of shots that that are going to need to be taken even on a night where Clay Thompson's cold that's fine he's one of the greatest shooters of all time like there's no problem with that but it's a matter of not having the the bad night turn into a, a really bad night, a, a night that absolutely kills you. And I think that's where there's been you know problems with Clay from time to time. So I think the bigger games are coming. I think the games that level out his overall averages are probably coming. And, and the good news is for the Warriors that if he can do that, they're probably going to get on a little bit of a run, which I think they need to get on given where they are currently in the standing. So I think that's a good sign. The key for Clay, though, still to me is the games where he's not hitting and how he handles the games where he's not hitting because right. there seems to be this added pressure that he puts on himself to have to get it into the act. And I get it. It comes from winning. It comes from being the number two for so long. And maybe the contract as well. And and I think wanting the contract. Absolutely. I think that's all fair. Yeah, Triple Eight Nine Five Seven Ninety Five Seventy. Are you feeling like the dubs are back on track? After the win over Houston, let's go to Saul in San Francisco. Saul, you're on with JD and Dibs. What's going on? What's going on, fellas? It's Saul from New York, currently in San Francisco. Uh, what are we? What are we doing here? We go on six games losing streak at home, and then we win one game against the Free and Rockets, and we're talking about are we back? I mean, Jesus Christ! I mean, Saul, Saul these are not on. these are not uh, your older brother's Rockets. It's the new Rockets now, yeah, Saul. Yeah, but Hakeem Olajuwon's not walking through that door either. No, the, the Rockets are real, yeah, Saul. Yeah. You got to put some respect on their name. I'm going to put about uh, six out of ten stars respect on Rockets' name. Uh, okay, th- they're not scaring anybody. They're not scaring me. It's fine. It's a good win. You know, we got to win. God, we needed a win, right? But I mean, are they back? Can can Clay get more than one friggin' game with more than twenty points? You know, are we back yet? Can Wiggins play like like the Wiggins of remotely uh, old? You know, is Draymond gonna play more than three games? You know, what are we doing here? Well, what we're doing is we're trying to look at the the bright side here, Saul. We're trying to look at uh, a quality win. They've won one in a row. Is is one in a row a streak, Saul? It's definitely not a streak. I mean, you're talking to a New Yorker, all right? <laughs> the bright side of one game, you know what I mean? You know, that's not really what we do. We we look at one game, we go, all right, good for you, thanks. Can you put four more together, please? Yeah, and maybe that's why your uh, New York Knicks haven't won a title uh, since Dave DeBusher saw 50 years, if I'm not mistaken. The Knicks suck. I'm not a Knicks fan. I'm a Dubs fan. You know, I transplanted over here, and I just decided, you know, might as well acclimate myself with the culture, and, uh, and here I am. Also, Real quick, can I give a, a, a little shout-out? There was a guy who called in earlier. His name was Brent from San Francisco. He said he was a real estate agent. That's actually my real estate agent, and uh, he got me a nice house over here. He's a good dude. Brent Walsh with Compass. Y'all should look him up. He's a great guy. Look at you, Saul. Shout him out. Appreciate the phone call. Have a great Thanksgiving. And, uh, yeah, a free little uh, real estate plug 
on his way out the door. And you know what, J.D., you, you can't have a realtor who is too good. I got to shout out my realtor, Tiffany LaFour. Uh, she handled our, our sell and our buy of our houses. Oh, that's good. Fantastic work. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, go ahead and look her up if you need a good I, realtor. I, I'm actually going to Google it right now. If, well, I, I'm gonna, Are you in the market for I, a new home? Eh, not at the moment. Okay. Not at the moment. <laughs> but, yeah, she's fantastic. But if, if I was, I'd look her up. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Steve Kerr coming up here at the top of the hour, 888-957-9570. You always got to be prepared, Dibs. You always. Apologies for jumping you there no, on the number. You, you can jump the number. You know the number, and they know the number. We'd love to hear from you. Where are you with the Warriors right now? How are you feeling? And I know six game, uh, six game losing skid is not good, and it's something that makes you feel like maybe you're not going to be all back in on the Warriors. But you know, you go to Phoenix, tough game tomorrow, and then you come back with a couple of games that are, I think, much more winnable. Home to San Antonio, you go to Sacramento, then you got a. a a doubleheader with the Clippers, one here, one there. If you're playing well and you get Draymond back, I believe you get Draymond back for Phoenix, right? No, uh, no, for, no, for, for San Sac- Antonio. Sacramento. Oh, yeah. he's got two more he's got to yeah. sit. Yeah, he's got... Man, it's a long five games. It, it is It is a long five games. Yeah, we got two... Because oh, it, it was the minute. It was the yeah, second Minnesota. It was two Thunder, yeah, and, oh, Houston, Houston, Phoenix, Phoenix, and then the Spurs. Yeah. Even, yeah. Though they're, even though they're coming every other day, it's still... See, I, I'm with you. It feels like we're farther along. On the suspension, yeah, than they and were. I, I wonder what he's up to now. He can he be in the arena, but just not no. on the bench. He can't be in the arena yeah, at all. There, there's a certain time where I, I think he can go into the arena up until a certain point, like if you wanted to get a workout in. But I think there's a, a certain cutoff time where he's got to go. Cannot be in the arena. Wow, uh, any, anymore. Yeah, and that, that's just such a weird thing. And you know, Steve Kerr came on and uh, he talked about. In the post game, you probably were there when he said, "Yeah, I thought five games was appropriate." And I don't know what you thought of that. I thought five games was a little harsh. And yes, he choked uh, Rudy Gobert and he dragged Gobert and he held the choke for I don't know five six seconds. But Gobert had his hands on Clay Thompson, and I can't believe that Gobert didn't get a game himself. That's what surprised me. Yeah, I I thought Gobert was gonna. I don't know that Gobert was going to get a game the way that it all ended up being explained in the aftermath. I I felt like even the even if you are taking prior transgressions into account for Draymond, I still feel like five is a little high. I I, I feel like this like on on merit maybe two for for this incident. Yeah, and then if you wanted to add on top of that, maybe it becomes three three four. Five seem, but but again, this is not the first time we're having the prior incidents conversation. In fact, I think you could make the case it's the third or the fourth time we're having that. So so is it is it one game for the act? And now we're talking. Well, you're on your fourth level of prior incidents, so that means you're getting one game for each of those, or you're getting one game for each of the of every two prior incidents, and that's what turns a a, a two game suspension maybe into five because you've got six prior incidents, and we're right. going to give you a game for every two of those. And so, yeah, I, I think that's part of the, the math. And, and look, Joe Dumars, who's in charge of doling out the punishment right now in the NBA, not the first time that he, in the NBA press release, has said, right. I'm not down with this. Exactly. And what and, I find to be, and I guess it's not hypocritical because he's in a new role, but I do find it ironic that a guy who won titles based on the fact that he was a part of the quote bad boys and you know the perfect guy to dole out the punishment right it's hypocrisy jd and if you look at what his teammates did whether it was rick mahorn and a hard foul or bill lambeer with a cheap shot or dennis rodman and i know when he kicked a cameraman that was when he was with the bulls but dennis rodman the worm was a bit of a grimy player as well. So you're talking about a team that was known as the bad boys, and one of the bad boys is now the one doling out punishment? Feels a little bit hypocritical. Uh, JD in for Mark Willard. Here's one from the Comcast Business text line, and I want to ask you, because T-Dog asked a very good question. 
Have we come to the point that Draymond now hurts the Warriors more than he helps them? Is his sporadic behavior causing the end of the dynasty? That's T Dog from the Comcast Business Text Line. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, what do you? I, I don't think. I don't think so either. I don't. I, and I think if it but was, but I do think it's a question that is. It's worth asking because from the four one five on the Comcast Business Text Line, five games is the warning. Twenty games is next. Well, and maybe 10. Right? I, mean, I don't know about I don't know about 20, but maybe 10. I agree 10. with you, but if it is 10, let's say that Draymond gets into another altercation and he happens to push a guy or he chokes another player, he's looking at 10 games and at that point, I think that then it does start to hurt the team. No, I I think I think you're right about that. I think it is a situation where uh I mean <laughs> Yeah, the the next it, it's there can't be an, another incident like that one or even like the one in Sacramento. I I think at at this point, but there will be. Well, I mean, to think that there won't be, well, I but, think, is a little bit naive. Well, it, but again, there's a difference. There's levels to sure that you know what. Again, can you do something that gets you one game or two games and not get you, like if you get something that's twenty? Well, then we really are going to reach the the right. brink of is it worth it? Well, think to, about to the, continue to move the Donovan Mitchell incident where he pushes Donovan Mitchell from behind and they go to the video and they go, whoa, we, we didn't see this. You pushed him. You're getting a second tech and now you're rejected. If he does that again, he might get two or three games just based on the fact that Draymond Green has priors now. For Ex- something and, as well, innocuous as that. And and that's the part where it, it really does become unfortunate for, for everybody involved, but that's... The bed you've made, unfortunately, for the Warriors with Draymond. And and look, I've said over and over, over the fact that I agree with the fact that having him around still is more beneficial than it is not if you want to contend for championships. And I, I said the same thing about Clay Thompson. When, when the Warriors doubled down on Steph, Clay, Draymond with Steve Kerr for another year, does it mean you're going to automatically be good enough to win a title? Maybe not, but... If everything else clicks, it gives you a shot because you have those three. If you take one away, then it's then it is then you're admitting it's over before it ever starts. Right. And so why would you do that a year early? You're you're just at that point you're almost quitting a year early. It may you may not win it anyway, but to me you've got no shot at winning it if you don't have Draymond and have Draymond playing at a at a certain level. So you might as well risk it. 